Today we are talking about a method to supplement your chicken's diet for virtually no expense and uh, give them a really high quality food item that they will definitely enjoy. So chickens are one of those things that uh, most people know you can give them quite a few uh, sort of kitchen scraps, vegetables, that sort of thing. But there are a few things such as potato peelings that are, some chickens will eat them, but they're not really high on a chicken's uh, list of things that they want to eat typically. So one thing you can do is basically cook them. This is kind of an old timey thing that uh, people used to do for a lot of different livestock on a very small scale is uh, they would actually cook food for them, very similar to cooking food for a human. Very familiar scene at the kitchen uh, counter with some things we're going to cook. But as I said, this is a chicken recipe. So what we're actually going to do is use this big uh, cast iron pot and we're going to put our ingredients into it, which is essentially some squash peels, uh, quite a few potato peels, a little bit of celery. Some of this they would eat without cooking it. So we're going to basically just put all of this into here. And this is the nice part with this. You could use a really wide range of things. So there's really not a huge direction on it. But we're going to go ahead, get everything in here, and then we're going to uh, get it cooking. For the actual cooking, oh, it's quite heavy. We are cheating and we are just going to put it on the wood stove. And it can basically do its thing in there overnight and we'll come back to it in the morning. Well we are the next day and I'm going to show you here in a second but our big cast iron pot full of uh, sort of scraps for the chickens was basically simmered all night on the wood stove so we don't know exactly what temperature but at a lower heat so it should be well softened and I think that's the the principal thing here. We just were trying to soften it up now some people are going to say why go to all that work and to be honest if you don't want to you don't have to but one of the biggest arguments that usually comes from the notion of feeding the livestock whether it's chickens rabbits whatever it doesn't matter what it is sort of a i'm going to use the term a whole food diet i.e just giving them the potato peelings and all the vegetable scraps and that sort of thing is they're very likely to pick through and only eat the parts that they really love. It's not that the other parts are bad for them, but think of the mentality of a small child, where uh, if you put it on their plate and they don't like the looks of it, they may go, hmm, I'm not eating that. Animals are the same way. So one of the things that sort of the feed industry has done, and that most of us are very familiar with, is create pellets. Basically what a pellet is, is all of that stuff smushed together into a soft mush and then made into a pellet, i.e. dried. So everything is basically disguised in that pellet and we all know that uh, pretty much regardless what the livestock is, because those pellets have been formulated for sort of optimal consumption by those animals, they're very readily eaten by them. So we're kind of mimicking that process on a super small homestead scale before I get going too far and show you what's in the uh, big cast iron orange pot, I am going to add a few other things that I just happen to have on hand. So we've got a little bit of lamb meat. This had quite a bit of fat on it and we actually basically uh, cooked this down to get some of the tallow out. And this is kind of what we're left with. And then we have some duckweed, which you'll see a video on this in the near future. As I say, the big thing here is this is pretty much like a kitchen sink recipe. You can throw all sorts of things that you may have on hand into it. So here we go, our big orange pot. I'm going to open it up here, let it drip off, and you can see it's cooked quite nicely. There's quite a bit of liquid in there, which is good because we are making this into a bit of a mush here momentarily. But it's that simple. So the big argument really could be here why bother with the time and effort and the rationale is if you are trying to basically reuse things that otherwise would have been a waste product from our cooking you can basically turn it into a usable food by your chickens and uh, if you do happen to have a wood stove etc you're not even really using power for it because you're kind of already uh already burning wood in there but I'm going to go ahead, and uh, this will be the boring part, 
get that in here and I suspect that by the time I get this ground into a mush with the other additives I will actually have a fairly large amount. So I figured I'd sort of show it here now that I've got uh, sort of my first round to go into the uh, processor here. You kind of end up with a bit of a gravy in here and I'm going to liken this a lot to cooking for dogs or cats. People do make homemade food for their pets. This isn't a lot different in my opinion. Well, there it is. We're kind of left with a mushy looking substance. You can see I probably had a little more liquid than I absolutely needed. I'm not super worried about it because uh, we are going to feed this in a dish. But I'm basically going to mix this up and uh, just get it stirred around a bit because I did it in multiple batches. But this has taken me very little actual time uh, to do this. Well, the next step is to take it out to the chickens and see how they approve of it. So uh, let's head outside. Before I head outside, I was just going to quickly show the basis of our chicken diet during the winter months in particular is sprouted grains. In this case, wheat primarily which no, we do not produce on the farm at this point in time. And uh, usually lentils or peas, which uh, are human food grade that we kind of add as a little bit of an extra. Mostly for economic and availability reasons, this has been the mix. And they do quite well on it. But the extra protein and variety that uh, this kind of food or similar provides them. We're really noticing this winter in particular because we've upped the quantity of this kind of food, not exactly this, but this kind of food that uh, we've been feeding them. And uh, it seems to be making a big difference at a small scale. So we are still going to give them some of their base diet, although I will probably reduce the volume today and we'll see how they like this. Well, and there they are. There's the proof. They uh, definitely seem to approve. Well, that one's got a stand in it, but uh, they, they do seem to enjoy the fact that it's sort of bite size. But that flavor, just like humans, that flavor is mixed on everything. So whether it's potato peels, squash, etc., it's kind of all going to have a similar flavor to them. And uh, be honest it's mostly gone here already so I would say that's a win. So now that you've kind of seen the process we're kind of to the boring part of the video so if you made it this far great. I'm basically going to talk about I think the things the strong points of this method the ability to potentially scale this up at a homestead scale and sort of what things could be good inputs into this because it's all about inputs. So first, as we've already mentioned, it still takes time. Uh, for us, we can reduce the energy because we have a wood stove, so we can put the cast iron cooking vessel on the wood stove, and you're basically cooking that for no electricity, which is awesome. That's a very old-timey trick. But a lot of people may argue, well, why am I cooking for chickens? Well, if chickens are a high-value item on your homestead that produces a lot of food for you, if you can convert an item that would otherwise have been a waste product into something that they eat readily. And there is the argument for just give them the scraps. Absolutely, but we've kind of been noticing when you cook it, there is no waste. When you give them scraps, they may pick through the scraps and there may be waste, i.e. things like potato peelings are not necessarily high on their food item list, at least in our experience. But when cooked, the potatoes take on the flavor of everything else that's in the pot. Essentially, it's like a kid. You're feeding the chickens a food item that all tastes the same and uh, they're very easy to trick into eating the good parts. Now, the big thing with this, this is very similar to sort of using compost uh, material or compost piles. Some great videos on YouTube that people have seen about some large scale compost facilities that can basically feed chickens for nothing. But you're still requiring a lot of input, no matter how you've cut this, you always have to have an input to feed your animals. It's just the reality of it. Animals consume, including us. 
But there's definitely a few things that we see that are uh, sort of key items here that on a homestead scale, you could totally either upscale or divert into using in this kind of chicken diet without really costing you anything, maybe a little bit of time. So a few things that we definitely see that would be worthwhile growing specifically to feed chickens are things like potatoes, because when they're cooked, are an excellent uh, sort of carbohydrate type food item. Uh, so it keeps them full for lack of a better way to put it. Turnips is another one, very simple. And the turnips is both the green part of the turnip and the, uh, the root. So you actually could get two products out of that. Kale or a lot of the other brassicas, if you grow broccoli, etc., saving all those leaves, heck, even cooking the stalks down to a point that you could puree it into this type of food is fantastic. Definitely other root vegetables like carrots and whatnot, but those are a little trickier to grow. Uh, beets are another one. Uh, and Swiss chard, those are both very simple and uh, they produce a lot of biomass, which is what you're looking for. Dried beans. This is something that may be a little bit controversial, but if you cook them, the research that I've done is they're a great food source. And of course, we know that they also, they give fiber and they give protein. Growing dry beans, like our switch to pole beans, is a very simple way to grow a lot of high quality food for your chickens. But the key is it has to be cooked. So it can only really work in this method, similar to the potatoes. Canning season, when you're processing a lot of stuff, if you have the ability, and this is the downfall, if you have the ability to store it for later use in winter, i.e. freeze it, uh, which is something we've done with a lot of the greens that we collected over the summer, that is fantastic. But the other way to do it, which you'll see coming up in another video, is to potentially pressure can it, and that gives you a lot more flexibility as to uh, sort of when you use it. So stay tuned for that. <clears throat> but converting those otherwise waste products into the, to the food and keeping in mind that this is not using sort of questionable items. You still want to, you don't want to be feeding them rotten vegetables, etc. I mean, what happens in a compost facility is a little different as far as the food breaking down uh, than just having a bunch of moldy old bread or something that you've decided to feed to the chickens. So keep that in mind. You still need to have high quality ingredients to get high quality output. That is even uh, a certain red monster who was talking about crickets said the same thing. Another thing that uh, this sort of concoction works really well for is when you're canning, I'm sure everybody knows this, you have a tendency to end up with a few cans of things that either you've held on to for a little too long or you didn't really like it. So as long as it doesn't have any of the real negatives like chocolate, avocado, even onions and garlic in small amounts are not the end of the world. That's just our opinion. As long as it doesn't have those things that you really shouldn't feed chickens in it, that can be an excellent way to bulk it out too. So definitely if this has interested you at all, uh, stay tuned because we will talk about some other uh, methods of doing this. And do keep in mind, this is still us experimenting, but the initial results seem to be very favorable because the chicken is very similar to humans in that it's an omnivore that will eat a wide range of foods. And even though conventional agriculture has really boiled it down to sort of figuring out what the staples are and a consistent diet, chickens do thrive well on a balanced but diverse diet. So a wide range of foodstuffs can be incorporated into this diet. Of course, the last topic is really the, the protein or the meat side of things, which we may talk about that more in a future video, but there are ways to incorporate that as well. We tend to use what we consider to be somewhat waste products from our processing of our other animals, and we don't feed chicken meats. That's something we're going to say explicitly here. We don't, uh, we don't feed. That's just our personal preference. But when it comes to rabbits or sheep, uh, we always make sure we get the organs back or, or we save them ourselves. And uh, that's an excellent food to convert here because it's like we said, you're making a little bit of the stuff that they want the most go a lot longer by flavoring everything. So feeding chickens is really a lot like feeding kids.